So splicing is where you have a channel and you either want to move funds in or out on chain. You basically want to change the commitment transaction. You know, and you go, hey, I want to splice. And it goes, so it goes great. And you go, cool, I want to add this input and I want to add this output. And the other side also gets a chance to kind of throw things in. Oh, cool, I'll add this output, I'll add this input. And so this is this, this negotiation of what the new on-chain transaction, which will spend the old channel and basically create a new channel atomically, will look like. And that protocol of, of, of negotiation is the same one that Lisa spent so long writing uh, for dual funding, which is the same idea. And you go, hey, Max, let's open a channel, and your node goes, great. You know, and you can go, cool, I'm going to throw some inputs in as well and some outputs for change and whatever else which of course is a coin join, right? This is uh, basically a coin join protocol uh, between two peers. So you can do it to, you can already do it to create a, a, a an opening transaction with C Lightning. Um, and, you know, when I finish this work, I'm basically reusing exactly the same protocol to negotiate on a live on a live channel and go, hey, we want to reconfigure it this way. You know, because you want to take funds out or you want to put more funds in. And of course, as we look further down the track and we have things like signature aggregation, um, it becomes extremely attractive, right? If you have cross input signature aggregation, that well, hey, while you're splicing, yeah, I'll throw some more stuff in as well, right? Um, because that becomes cheaper. So, but even as it is, it's it's a good opportunity to do, for you to do fund cleaning and and everything else. Um, and interestingly, unlike a normal coin join, you have this great ability to go ah. I don't really want to make that small change output. I'll just top up the channel, just put more in the channel, right? Whatever, right? So you have some interesting flexibility there, which also has the great side effect of confusing on-chain analysis. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, yeah. But that's an example of, of spec work that's been ongoing and gone back and forth over like a year plus. Uh, um, Lisa going through the spec changes and then implementing it and then going back to the spec and going, no, that didn't work and everything else, particularly because we did want it to be completely generic, right? You should be able to open a channel in theory at the same time as you're doing a coin join with someone else and have the coin join come out as the channel output. And your peer doesn't know that you're doing that. You're just feeding it all those inputs and outputs that you're actually feeding from somewhere else. That ideal isn't met there, but you can definitely do uh, multiple channel opens at once, right? That's that's the easy case, right? You just talk to all these peers. Um, I tried to open a channel with everyone on testnet at once um, a while back. Most most nodes on testnet are dead because people didn't set them up and then drop them. But I think I still ended up with like something like a hundred opens in a single transaction uh, with every node. I would do it on mainnet except I can't afford it. Um, that would be kind of a cool experiment if someone wants to give me, you know, a couple of Bitcoin to play with. I would happily do that as well. But you know, developing that protocol and making all that work was was a lot of back and forth. And some of these things, you know, nobody's smart enough to just write it from scratch. You really have to kind of, oh, have a first draft, try it, go back and, and just keep iterating until you get something you like.